A few weeks ago, Samsung launched the Galaxy A51, a sleek Android phone with four rear cameras that only cost $400. I got to spend some time with the phone as well as my colleague Jessica Dolcourt who reviewed it. And here's what we think about it so far. Now, as a budget device, the A51 isn't as high end as the Galaxy S20 phones, but it still packs a lot of excellent hardware. This includes a large and bright 6.5 inch display with an in-screen fingerprint reader. The phone is slim and light, and I especially like its thin bezels. It makes the phone look chic, and the hole punch camera keeps it looking modern like the Galaxy S series. The A51 also has four rear cameras, which is pretty amazing all things considered for a $400 phone. But really, you only use three of the four since one of the cameras is for depth sensing and doesn't take photos. In general, the phone takes excellent pictures, especially in ample outdoor lighting. Compared to its flagship cousin, the S20 though, photos aren't as sharp and video isn't as smooth. That's because the A51 lacks optical image stabilization, which both the Galaxy S20 and the iPhone SE have. Speaking of the new iPhone SE, which has only one rear camera, Apple's phone does take comparable photos as the A51. Even with low light images where the A51 has a dedicated night mode, both phones took solid photos. But there are some areas where one or the other has an advantage. With the A51, for example, you just have more options. The wide angle takes expansive shots and macro photos allows you to get up close without losing focus. The macro camera works especially well with good lighting. But as I mentioned before, the iPhone is much better at recording video and its colors are more true to life. Of course, that second part is a personal preference. I like the more natural way the iPhone handles colors and tones, but you can like the punchier, more contrasted look of photos from the Galaxy A51. For more on how both phones compare, check out our in-depth iPhone SE and A51 camera comparison. Besides its cameras, the A51 also has a headphone jack and a long-lasting battery. The phone clocked in about 16 hours on our battery drain test for continuous video playback on airplane mode, which is on par with the iPhone SE. We're continuing to do battery tests for streaming video, so check back with a written review for an update. The phone is not without its faults though. For instance, its Exynos processor does feel sluggish. Benchmarking test results weren't really that great and day-to-day -day usage like launching and quitting apps, calling up the keyboard and tapping on the screen felt laggy. It also doesn't have wireless charging or water resistance, which I get, that can be a lot to ask for a $400 phone. The Pixel 3a from last year costs the same and doesn't have those features too. I'm not going to ding either one too hard for not having it, but keep in mind the iPhone SE has both. All in all, the Galaxy A51's sluggishness is its biggest drawback. Honestly, I don't care too much that it lacks water resistance or wireless charging, and Samsung could even take out one of these cameras if it means that it could get its processor up to speed without raising the price. Having said that, the A51 though is a good Android phone that's affordable and it has a vibrant screen and a camera setup that gives you lots of flexibility. For more tech videos, check out the rest of CNET's channel. That's it for me from now. Stay safe and see you next time.